Hey guys, Guna Matley here. So sort of like breaking news, well, if that's what you want to call it. So Arsenal signed Jorginho from Chelsea for 12 million. It's uh, to 2024 with another year available to extend it. And yeah, there's been quite an uproar in some of the fans. And if I'll be honest, it's not someone that I'm happy that we've signed, but he is a decent player. So you're not, you're not going to get me to cuss him and say he's not or anything like that. You know what I mean? But it's not the signing anyone really wanted, is it? You know what I mean? Getting a cast off from Chelsea, once again, who's old. And if you look at the past track record, it's not really been that great, has it? So yeah, you can see why some of the fans ain't too happy. But at the end of the day, El Nini's out injured. Party, touch wood. He doesn't get a major injury this season, but if he does, that's when I'm thinking that's when we've got a bit of problems. But obviously, for, for right now, Party is going to be starting. Jorginho is going to be there for as a cover. So yeah, overall, if we're looking at the signings we've had. Trossard came in. We've got that Jacob Jacob Kivior or Caviar, and then now we've got a midfield cover in Jorginho. So if you look, look back to last year in January, we didn't make any signings. So if you're looking at that from this year, yeah, we're making some ground. You know what I mean? We're looking a bit better. But you can still see why some of the fans ain't too happy, man. And to be honest, I'm not really that happy. But I'll take the signing we've got. It's better than Arsenal not signing anyone. And um, yeah, that's not really the benchmark to be setting the levels. Or it's better than, this, you know what I mean, than having no one. But... At least we have signed someone, you know what I mean? Not the cliche to say it, but Trossard is a decent player. I'm happy with that signing. He's experienced. He scores big goals against big teams. Has done for Brighton throughout his career. Will do the same for us. So yeah, Defo, Defo, a good player. I, if I be honest, I think Jorginho is probably slightly better than Xhaka, if I'm honest. And if I was going to replace anyone with it, it would be a Xhaka replacement for me, Jorginho, I think. But they're both quite slow. They're both very similar in the way they are. So that's what made me think, why are we signing someone again that's sort of in the same mold as Xhaka? The only thing is, I'd say, Jorginho probably got a little bit more about it than what Xhaka does on the ball. He's, he's able to turn a little bit more and stuff. Xhaka's a very slow and he's very one-footed. So, But yeah, like, like not putting Xhaka down, he's having a season of his life this year so overall i'd probably rate the rate the six five seven out of ten overall you can't really complain you know what i mean we've we've got the cover we need in the areas we needed it whether it was our first key players that we wanted is another thing that we can debate but i'm not one of these fans that are saying let's call for edu out let's call for our titter out at the end of the day the process is doing well this year, but you can see the progression of the team. And um, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not gonna be sit there and pat their ass and say it's the greatest window ever. But th they're being proactive. They're signing players that we need at the end of the day, and that's that's all we can ask for. And um, now we've just got to get behind the signings, get behind the team, and hopefully we can um, do the same performances we have in the last 19 games in the next 19 games. And then if we do, we'll win the league. But yeah, man, it's a bit, you know, like you chase Mudrick. And for me, like, I've already made a video on the Mudrick situation, so I'm not going to go deep into it. But for me, I don't think he was worth the money that Chelsea have paid. He could be, like he definitely could be. He looks a great talent. He probably is going to be one of the best players in the world at some point. But at the end of the day, you're buying for potential. And Arsenal didn't need big sums of money on potential. We needed players that could come in and hit the ground running because we're in a position where we haven't been for the last 20 years. So the the, the Mudrick duel, instead of getting him, we've got Trossard. I'm happy about that, 110%. 20 million, Premier League proven experience, can get you goals. What else could you ask for? 100% wicked signing. Jacob Caviar or Caviar, he can play left back, left centre back in defensive midfield. And it's, I was watching Tom Canton's stream yesterday morning. And it's actually, he's actually played in defensive midfield more than he has in any other position for the team he played for in Italy. So, who never knows? He could be covering centre midfield. And yeah, and then obviously, there's all this hype about Casado. We sort of bid twice for them, Brighton are not having it. And then, 
If you're talking 90, 100 million, that's crazy money for a kid that's not even played 30 games in the league. But you can see how good he is. That's one thing I will say. His defensive stats and his ball progression and that, stat-wise, he's, he's an amazing player. He's only 21 years old. Is he worth 100 mil? No doubt. No, no way. But if that's who we want, go get him. That's the only thing I say. Arsenal don't tend to move like a big team in the transfer windows. We sit, we sort of like a, have a small club mentality sometimes. It really is annoying for some fans. I get, I get the, the frustration out there. But at the end of the day, Jorginho is a good player. He was in the Euros. He won the Euros. Been up for Ballon d'Or awards. Like he was third. You know what I mean? Like he's not a shit player, man. So we can't argue with the fact that we've got a quality player, but he's aging. That's the only problem. And the past, like David Luiz didn't quite work out. He was half all right for us. I'd say he wasn't a bad signing, but William didn't work out for us. These are all old signings that we've bought from Chelsea. So you can see why the frustration is in the Arsenal fans. You can see it, man. But like I said, I'm not one of these fans that's going to be calling for Ed, Edu's head. Yeah, he could have done... Pro my, like, like I was talking to my brother a little while back and we have a little argument slash debates about it. But <clears throat> like the fees are big difference in when you're looking at how much Gapo was bought for for Liverpool and then how much we were trying to buy Modric for. But my whole thing is Modric wanted to sign for us in June. He's been shouting out, putting his first Instagram post since June. We then put our first bid in a week and a bit into the transfer window. We could have put our bids in before January and then we would have known how much they wanted. And then we could have sat there at the 1st of January and said, are we going to go 85, 90 million euros or are we going to go for someone else? Now, if we did that and be, been a bit more proactive with our business, then we could have walked away from the Mujic deal well before. This, this is what my frustration is at times with Arsenal. If you're not going to pay the money that they want and they wasn't willing to play ball, we could have had this situation thrashed out well before mid of January. So therefore, you then move on and go and get the other signings done. And then you move on to the other positions you need covering. You don't wait four days to go for four. The January, January transfer window is going to close before you start making bids for Brighton's number one midfielder. Because now that leaves them with three or four days to say, do we accept this and take the mega bucks and then go and try and get a replacement? And maybe they can't. So this is what I'm saying. If we'd done our business early, we could have had Mudrick and we could have had Casado. We don't know, innit? It's all your buts and maybes, but you've got to do your business early, guys. And that's like the main frustration for me. Last January, we didn't do any business. This January, we've signed three players. So when you're looking at it like that, yeah, we've done well. We have done well. But we still haven't got a world-class midfield replacement for Thomas Partey. And we've been screaming for it for over two years. You know what I mean? Touchwood, like I said at the start of this video, he doesn't get a bad injury this year. Because if he does, we are only going to be left with Jorginho. Because Elneny's about to have this operation I'm hearing. And we've loaned out Lokonga to Fulham. So, just like I said, Touchwood and hope that bad injuries don't happen to us in midfield. Because we will have problems this year. But yeah, man. That, that's like my little two pence piece and my rant all over. Uh, Cedric also went out on loan to Fulham. And uh, Marquinhos also went out on loan to Norwich. So let's hope Marquinhos can do well. And let's hope Cedric puts in a good shift so they buy him off of us. <laughs> but yeah, man. Like I said, it's, it's not a rant. You can still be our tether in and trust the process and where we're going and still question some of their, what they're doing and not be a negative fan. And that's that's how I see myself. I'm not negative, but you can still question some of the decisions they're making. Like Arsenal under the Ed Edu Arteta project, or heresy, if you want to call it, haven't made all the subs been great. You know what I mean? Like I can pull out Runnison, David Luiz, Willian... The Congo hasn't worked quite worked out. Who else we got? Cedric, Mari. Um, who else is there? Turner. We're starting to look a bit dodgy, but he's starting to come well. I'll, I'll give Turner the blight on that one. But I'm sure there's a couple more. Who else hasn't worked out for us? It's a bit hard to think off the top of my head now. But I know there's a couple more in there, 100%. 
So there's been at least six or seven signings they've made that haven't really worked out for us. But like I said, you you trust the process. You don't have to be a negative fan. You don't have to be putting down the team. You don't have to. You can be constructive with your negativity, basically. Like I've seen a lot of fans. It's like it's the end of the world now. It's done. But the only my main thing is Arsenal's not been in this position for 20 years where we've been top of the league and flying the way we are. So really and truly, this January we should have been like the big dogs with the big dick swinging and gone out and got who we wanted. That's that's that would have made a statement, and that's what a lot of fans are trying to shout out for. But we've made key signings in areas we need, and overall I'm happy. And yeah, just you got to trust the process and get behind the team now, isn't it? That's it. The signings are made. We've let loaned out who we're going to loan out, and yeah, fingers crossed we can still win the league and get there with the players we've got, man. And another thing we're forgetting, Zinni can come from left-back and play in midfield. And then we can put Kieran Tini at left-back. We, we have got options. It's not like we haven't got anybody. So, the, Thomas Party, world-class replacements. Probably not the end of the world when you've got Jorginho that can play there. Zinni can play there. Maybe even Xhaka could come back. We could put Vieira, uh, Emil Smith-Rowe in the eight on the left side. We have options in midfield. So, it's not the end of the world, guys. So, yeah, man. Big love to you all. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll, I'll give it a 6.57 out of 10 for the rating for my uh, transfer windows. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the love and support. The channel's doing great. And it's all because of you guys loving and watching and giving me the likes and stuff. So thanks you a lot, man. So yeah, so to the next time, this is YouTube uh, Guna Motley, the YouTube correspondent, signing off. Got tongue-tied there. Take care, guys.